you know, if you're just, wherever you are in your journey, if you're just getting started, uh, what helped me a lot was realizing that I can do it. it was my own, I think, confidence back then of not knowing how or whatnot. Well, all that is teachable. Everything is learnable as well. So have the right mindset. Um, don't just think about it. At some point, you have to take the action piece as well. Um, and if all these other people can do it, you know, you can definitely do it as well. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, and this is the show where we talk about raising private money without having to ask anybody for money. Well, let me tell you something. I've got some amazing guests here on the show uh, today here with me. Uh, we're fellow Mastermind members. Uh, in addition to that, let me let you go ahead and know right up front that this dynamic duo, they have already raised over $10 million dollars in private money since they've been in the real estate investing space. In addition to that, they have solely acquired over 240 apartments in just a few short years. And that spans across the Canada, the United States, Mexico, and even Costa Rica. Now, the strategy that they use, and we're going to dig deep into that, the strategy they use actually gives them the ability to purchase properties without using any of their own money or relying on joint venture partners. So what does this do? Well, this allows them to own 100% of the property when they buy it, which means they keep 100% of the equity, 100% of the cash flow, and of course they get all the appreciation. Now, they've got over 23 years of combined experience in investing in real estate. They're the founders of the coaching and education company, what's called the Action Family TM Mentorship Program. They are totally dedicated to helping folks like you create their own time, location, and really get the financial freedom. They do this by helping other people build their real estate portfolios without using as well, not their own funds, and they get to keep all the ownership as well. Now, to date, they have served and helped over 1,300 students to utilize their strategy across Canada and in the United States. Well, they both were able, because of this strategy, to quit their day jobs when they were only in their 30s. Well, following the debacle of the crash in 2018, they wrote two best-selling books. We'll get them to tell you about that as well. So along with being on uh, podcasts such as this one, they've been on really, really big podcasts like Bigger Pockets. And of course, they're very, very well known on social media as well. In fact, got over 350,000 followers. So in just a moment, you're going to meet my good friends, this dynamic team duo, Mel and Dave Dupuy, right after this. Mel and Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, Jay. Hey, so Jay. great to see you again. Yes, thank, thank you for you, having uh, us. So much for having us. We're super excited Appreciate to be that. here. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show and then uh, doing me the favor to come join me on my show as well. And so I can't wait to dive into your creative strategy that you use to acquire properties without having to use your own money, like I talked about in the intro. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk about raising private money a little bit. I mean, you've got a ton of experience in raising private money as well. But before we get to that, take us back to the beginning. How did your real estate journey actually begin? Yes, well, let's uh, rewind quite a few years here. So when I first met Dave, um, I had two properties. Dave had the one property and uh, we, did, we, we knew that we could somehow create wealth through real estate, but we weren't sure what <laughs> and how. So we did what we thought was the best thing to do. We got to work. We started working all the time. Uh, we were both working three jobs. I was full time at our local college, teaching part time classes, fitness classes and uh, part time at teaching college classes as well. Dave was a firefighter, a janitor, uh, what teacher's, else? teacher's aid. aid yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we bought a couple of properties and then guess what happened? We 
ran out of money. Um, so then um, we we read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad when we were away on vacation, and we realized that we were doing it completely wrong. So although it, it would then show us how to specifically do it, um, we realized that our mindset around it and that the way to get through it is was using other people's money or creative financing to grow a portfolio. But I had a lot of fear, especially me, we both did, but I, I certainly had a lot of fear about using other people's money because again, you it is other people's money. It's somebody's hard earned income that you are going to be using that you have to make sure to pay them back. So I had a lot of fear around that. So we really developed a solid foundation. Uh, we call it the exit strategy where you're going to be how to pay people back before you touch anyone's uh, dollar, of course. Um, and that was a life-changing year after we did that. We bought 12 properties in 12 months. Um, they're solely owned. So that was 56 units uh, using none of our own money, no joint ventures. I think our bio is a little uh, outdated on a few, a few things. But yeah, we purchased now over 250 units. We're now in five um, countries as well. And um, yeah, we're teaching people uh, how, to, how to do the same as well. That is amazing. Well, you know, I've discovered that all of us investors that have used private money in the past uh, and or currently use it, um, what I've discovered is all of us have something in common most of the time. And that is something happened in your real estate investing business to where you realize that, you know, uh, you learn about private money some kind of way and, and you start using it. What happened in your real estate investing business to where you realize that, you know, I need, I need to learn about private money or how did you, how did you ever originally hear about private money? I never heard about <laughs> private money until 2009 when I lost my line of credit, you know, at the banks in, in 2009, but how did your journey with private money begin? Okay. And I love that Jay. So kind of like you had said on our podcast the other day, we were part of the, uh, uh, the bank starting to say no, uh, no club, right? Yeah. The, the bank saying no more. So we had five properties and our total debt service ratios, uh, you know, our credit score was good and everything was good. Our, our, our income was good, but we hit their certain threshold where head office said no more. You're, we were buying in our personal names back then as well, not in entities. And we hit the, the roadblock. So they said, no, thanks, but no thanks. So that forced us into the, the creative financing world. And what's funny, like you, Jay, is uh, you were saying, I hadn't heard about it till we had a mortgage broker. And actually, I saw him a couple months ago, he, awesome guy. And he would always talk to us because there was another guy that was growing his portfolio very quickly. And he would talk to us about creative financing all the time and other people's money. And Mel and I, because Mel said she had a lot of fear in the beginning, we were worried like, wait a minute, what is this? Is this illegal? Is this, are we dealing with mafia? Like what? They were scared of going to jail. Let's put it that way. I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I'm a firefighter. I don't want to go. I don't want to do anything offside. So we had heard about it. And then once we read the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, I'm like, oh, people are doing this all over the place and kind of dove deeper. And that's why you make that joke, right? Uh, but yeah, once we understood that and got notes from the bank, uh, you know, we studied it, we, we made sure to have our exit strategy and that's kind of how we, uh, we were pushed into creative financing. Thank goodness. There you go. So when you started raising private money, of course, you've got multiple creative strategies that, that you use. And we want to dig into that here in a minute, but when you started raising private money, it's like, how did you start conversations or, or how did you get, you know, your, your first one or two lenders? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, the first one was really, I mean, it was owner financing. Uh -huh. um, so mm -hmm. number one was making sure that we understood it, right? So we, so we spent a lot of time researching it and, and learning about it and all that. Um, and then it was explaining, um, making it a win-win with the owner, right? Explaining why, like, they don't know us. The first person that lended us money, um, they didn't know us. And the first time we pitched it to somebody, it was far from perfect. We're human. It's still not perfect, right? There's always ways to improve. Um, so a couple of times kind of went back and forth and we'd come home and say like, oh, you should have said this or you mm -hmm. should have said this. And we helped each other as well to help perfect our, our pitch essentially. But it wasn't even, it wasn't really pitching. It was, it was, because it wasn't pitching. It, it's a win-win. Um, mm -hmm. And I think as soon as we realized that it was a win-win for us, because we didn't have to come up with a down payment, it was a win-win for the owner because they could defer their capital gains, for example, over five years. And um, they got interest as part of it and they were able to get perhaps close to full asking price, right? Um, and I, most importantly, I had my exit strategy where I can show them how I'm going to be paying them back. That's how they were more than willing to, to do the deal. And, uh -huh. and quite often, interestingly enough, um, one deal, 
often, although they said this is my only property, once we paid them back, all of a sudden they say, hey, guess what? I have more properties. We're like, what? He's I think like, we yeah. did three or four deals yeah, with that so guy. Yeah. At first he didn't tell us he had more than one building. Um, he had held his uh, cards close to him. And then he said, you know what? You paid me back on time. It was a very positive transaction. Let's do it again. And that's why it's so important when you're doing business to always make it a win-win and, and be very transparent with those you're doing business with as well. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and dive into your creative strategies to how it works. Now, we talked about you, you own all these apartments now in all these different uh, countries. Um, so did you buy, did you buy all these apartments with the seller carry back financing or owner financing, or did you buy some of them with private lenders coming along and funding the deals or tell us how, what that looks like. It may be all the above. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the deal, kind of whatever, whatever uh, uh, the deal requires the, the pieces, the puzzle that we have to put together. So our favorite, yes, it is seller financing, owner financing, carry back. Everyone's got a, a different, uh, but it all means the same thing. Basically when the, the owner takes the equity that they have in the deal and hold all financing. So, that's our favorite. That's our go-to. We ask that on every deal. Not every deal says yes, but that is definitely our go-to, whether they're going to hold a first mortgage or a second mortgage. I always prefer when they hold the first mortgage, right? The lion's share, and then we come up with other private funds for the, the down payment. But um, yeah, uh, so those will use uh, registered funds in Canada, retirement funds in the US, like we had discussed, right? The uh, self-directed um, uh, IRA and the funds. So that's, that's as well has to be in the form of a mortgage. And then we'll also do promissory notes. Um, but with the promissory notes, we'll make sure that they have some sort of, you know, some sort of security or collateral, or for example, we've done it where uh, they've been named in our life insurance policy, right? So that they feel secure or there's been, or we don't go over leverage on the deal, making sure that if something happens in the exit, we still have enough uh, uh, meat on the bone in the deal that if we had to sell ASAP, everyone could still get paid. So uh, pretty we much keep, all the yeah, about we keep it very deal specific for that. Again, um, we've all heard those those stories where people don't know what they're doing. They get excited and and, and they don't have the exit. Right. So that was definitely our foundation yeah. um, of, of, of growth. And um, a big part of it was also stabilizing, realizing that sometimes we're not always always in, in buying mode. Sometimes we have to stop. And you know, after a big growth, after 12 properties, 12 months, all of a sudden we have a lot of properties that we have to oversee for property reposition and stabilize yeah. and stabilize and all that. So, so going through some growth and stabilizing and, and we've been doing that um, over and over again. Sure. Well, uh, my focus uh, on the type of properties that I do are single family houses. And when I borrow private money, uh, we call it one offs, right? So do I have, you know, I got a private lender one or two that will fund that single family house. And, but with a, apartments, a, a lot of operators um, do what we call syndication. So uh, are some of your deals I would think are syndicated? We haven't gone that route um, just to be, it's been mostly, uh, and we've, we've looked at it a couple of times, actually syndications and that we haven't done it, uh, but it's been more kind of one-offs like you just said, Jay. It, okay. it just, well, that's a lot simpler. That's it, a lot simpler. <laughs> And it, it's basically doing the burr, right? Everyone knows the, uh, what is it? Buy, renovate, uh, rent, refinance, repeat. I always got to remember. Right, <laughs> so we, yeah. we, we do that and we pick the deals that we know will be, like, let's say, 12 to 24 months. Meaning, you know, Jay, you lend us money. We get into the asset, reposition it, change a few tenants over, do some cosmetic or gut job, whatever it needs, and then refi it to, to an A lender. Uh, within that that period of time to pay you out, and then we go do it again. So that's better. Kind of like kind of like you, kind of like the one off. Uh, so it hasn't been syndications, no. Gotcha. So it sounds like uh, you are you're, you're keeping all of these deals that you're doing. Like you're you're building like a huge portfolio, right? Uh, yes and no. Like it, we definitely kind of like the monopoly game. Some of the properties that we've purchased so out of the two fifty units, you know, we've definitely sold some throughout the years. Um, so, it, so it just depends. Sometimes we will flip some, sometimes we'll buy and hold. And then we still, I mean, Dave's little house, when I first met him, uh, <laughs> we still have that one, for example. Uh, some of them will, you know, we'll buy and hold for, for five years and then, you know, either potato or maybe sell it or quite, I mean, but overall, yeah, if we like to buy and hold overall, but we're not afraid to sell if it makes sense to perhaps take that money, invest it in a, a different, bigger deal where we can get a nice new lift. Um, so we've done a variety of, of uh, buy and hold, uh, flip and, and sell. Right. So, um, so how many doors would you say you have? 
Yeah, we still have over the the 200 mark. Uh, we're still like we actually got. It's fun because we're looking at a 10 unit in Costa Rica right now that was a um, uh, a hotel, and now we're going to make it into individual short term rentals. And again, it's always: do we keep it? Do we refinance? Co financing Costa Rica is a little bit stickier, so it, it's really a, a moving number now, a moving target. Depend depends on what we acquire and. When we, whenever we have our quarterly or monthly meetings with the accountants, we'll look at the asset corps, we'll look at the, the different things and it's like, hey, what's making sense? Do we take the equity, go do something else? So uh, that number is kind of, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's monopoly in real life, right? It's always a moving number. I love it. I love it. So let me make sure I understand your, your overall strategy uh, or your intention when you do a deal and you tell me if I got it right. So you locate a uh, you locate a property, um, uh, you know, apartment complex that you're interested in. We're going to come back and talk about that in a moment as to how you find these deals. Because whether it's single family houses or it's apartments, the two big questions are how do I find the deals and how do I fund the deals, right? So you find an apartment um, that you're interested in, and your go to is to talk to the owner about owner financing. That means they're the bank, they're they're financing that deal for you. And then you may use some private money in second position for down payment or renovations or, you know, value add, you know, bringing it up to par. And then in 12 or 24 months after you've got it up to par, you'll use a um, traditional lender for, you know, the, uh, for the, for the refinance. That way you're going to hold on to it. You're going to pay off the owner. If they did under finance, you're going to pay off your private lender and again, rinse and repeat and go find another uh, apartment complex that I, that I summarize that pretty good. Yeah, yeah good summary. Yeah, yeah pretty no, much. Yeah. You're hang on. Sometimes we use financial institution in first place. That's open to creative financing as well. Sometimes we use secured funds like in Canada, BRSPs and the States 401k. So we've done a variety of those um, as well, but yeah, essentially we exactly um, make sure the deal makes sense, make sure our ratios make sense so we can continue to get yeses from financial institutions. Um, do deal specific for that money find deals that make financial mm -hmm. sense with the exit strategy where we can force the appreciation. We never discount on natural appreciation and, and then yeah, refinance it or sell it depending on the situation, pay back everybody else. And then we go do it again. I love it. Well, what we're going to talk about next is how do you find these deals? But before we talk about how you find these deals, I want you to go ahead and share with our audience in case somebody has got to jump off early. I want you to go ahead and share with the audience uh, how to get in touch with you. And you've also got a free book uh, that you're uh, that you're offering to give away. So tell everybody about that and um, and, and give out the uh, website. Yeah, so we are all over social media. Our handle, uh, Instagram, for example, is always Investor Mel Dave on all the pro platforms. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook as well, and all the other platforms you can find us there. Um, and if you are interested, we're going to be talking I'm sure, a little deeper into the strategies. Um, but in this book, we we dive even deeper into uh, into our book, and we'll be providing you with some additional information as well. Um, you can go to www.iloveopm.com slash book. Um, it's an Amazon number one bestseller. Mm -hmm. We actually wrote it after a, a, after a horrific car crash. car crash. We never thought we were going to tell anybody how we're doing this before. Uh, but then we, we had a, a very bad uh, highway crash and then we decided to help other people do this as well. So go check it out. It's a short, tidy little book. You can read it in about four hours or so, depending on the, how quickly you read, but it's going to get you thinking um, bigger and, and the, you know, understanding creative financing a little bit more. I love it. So that URL for your book is www.iloveopm for other people's money. I love opm.com forward slash book. And again, your social media, uh, everything ends with investor mail, Dave. So that's Instagram, uh, is investor mail, Dave, Facebook, investor mail, Dave, TikTok, Investor Mail Dave, <laughs> and and LinkedIn, Investor Mail Dave. Now I know why you got three hundred and fifty thousand. Well, I think I was going to say I think I think uh, my my team maybe send the, the an older version because we're around seven hundred. I think we're over seven twenty or seven fifty thousand. Good it's night. Going, that, so. That's that's double. I need to have a, I need to have a side conversation with you about your, about how you're growing your social media. That <laughs> is absolutely, fantastic. Jay. Let's chat. Yeah, hundred percent, Jay. That's fantastic. All right. So let's, uh, by the way, um, if you're listening here to the show, be sure and download um, 
uh, that book that they've offered. And if you're driving, of course, it's going to be in the show notes as well. You'll be able to take advantage of that. So let's dive into how in the world do you find these properties? I mean, for goodness sakes, all the way back in um, 2017, I guess it was, you got you got 12 properties in 12 months, uh, and that was like 56 units in just like one year when you were starting out. How do you how do you find these deals for goodness sakes? You know what? Number one, I, I'd probably say I had the right mindset, right? We we, we really yeah. got we tuned in our, our mindset, knowing that well, other people are doing this. Um, you know, there's essentially we're all regular people, right? Um, if they can do it, I can do it too. So we definitely decided to to um, put a lot of work into this because we had a strong why. We have three kids. We knew someday we wanted to, to quit our full-time job. So we just, you know, instead of looking at five deals a week, we 10 x it, right? We looked at a lot of deals. Um, we had a lot of conversations mm -hmm. with, with uh, a lot of people. We definitely got a lot of no's as well, right? Not every deal is going to make sense or the exit strategy just wasn't there. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's how we were able to, to continue looking off-market deals and working with investor focus agents as well. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Have you got a, a resource you can share? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you got many resources, but is there a, a like, you know, I don't even know if LoopNet is still around. People used to talk about LoopNet and stuff. <laughs> is there any kind of websites out there that, that you go and look for deals? Well, honestly, and what we like doing, Jay, is it depends what we're doing. So if we're looking at a flip, we, we might look at hotter markets and also tertiary markets because the numbers on flips can, can, can work kind of anywhere. I guess depends how you look at it. If we're looking for buy and hold uh, rental properties that are going to cash flow, what we like doing is going to the secondary or tertiary markets, right? So uh, like we live in a city that's 50,000 people. I know Jay, you live in a smaller market as well. Like you can do deals anywhere, but we find that there's typically higher cap rates, lower purchase price, depending, you want to make sure the vacancy is not too, too high. Cause I've seen some in Texas where it's like over nine or 10%, even with amazing cap rates, but you know, how are you going to rent, uh, raise the rents and everyone's going to move out and you'll have no one to rent there anymore. So it's kind of like this fine line. So, but we love secondary markets. We love tertiary markets, higher cap rates. And then we'll start looking in there and asking for seller financing. So that's kind of our sweet spot and using investor focused real estate agents as well. And not being afraid to ask and let people know what you're doing. So when we definitely did not have a, any kind of budget whatsoever for any kind of marketing back then, um, well, we did what was free, right? Uh, having conversation with people. I, we used to have a little competition on uh, handing out business cards when we go grocery shopping. I would always win, by the way. Yeah, they'd, they'd rather talk to her than me, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but just letting people know. And it was fascinating just from doing that regularly over a longer period of time, not right now giving up after two days, um, how many people reached out to us because the word just got mm -hmm. around that, hey, the Duprees are buying a lot of properties. I want to sell my building. I'm going to call the Duprees. So just being consistent, looking at a lot of deals and uh, yeah, not a, not being afraid to getting some no's because sometimes that's that's part of, of being an investor. Sure. Uh, when someone is starting out, um, you know, in investing in apartments uh, like you have, and, and you all have, you know, trained and coached and educated a, a, a lot of people. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes that you see new investors making, getting into apartments and doing the business like you do? Yeah. And thank you, G, for, for saying that uh, our action family is now just shy of 2,100. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's grown. I it wouldn't. Anyway, after that car crash, we had no idea when we created it. But Something that I see a lot of is, Mal had mentioned earlier, the consistency, right? Someone will look for a deal for a couple of days and like, this doesn't work or no one's lent me money or I haven't found the ideal property yet. It's not a, it's not a, you, you might look for 10, 20, 30 days. Sometimes there's months we go by that there's no deals that meet our particular criteria that we want to invest other people's money in. Um, but it's that consistency. And then don't be shy like Mel said. So for example, like I'm just thinking back when we had zero budget and, and didn't know people, we would just go, we'd pick a uh, market that we want to be in. And there's always investor meetups, landlord meetups. Like there's always things that you can go to, to start learning for free, start having conversations. You're going to meet property managers there that might have clients that are looking to liquidate. You might meet other owners that are possibly looking at selling and maybe their kids or their beneficiaries are not interested. You might be able to pick things up. So those are the easier low hanging fruit uh, that I would say, just don't give up and, and do those kind of things. Um, be around people that, that are in real estate, right? I'm not saying all their 
not all information is good information, but no, but, but your network is your network, yeah. right? We, we have a lot of members that are doing great things together. Oh. For example, um, you never know who you're going to meet that maybe I have a bill. I mean, I've heard, okay, interesting here, Jay, uh, story time. Uh, we actually purchased, didn't see this coming. So uh, two uh, ladies from New Jersey joined our action family program years ago. They were buying properties in New Jersey, a fast forward um, down the road. And now they're doing a project development in Dominican Republic. And we actually ended up buying two, Units, uh, two penthouses from, from them as well yeah. in Punta Cana. Um, so that's the power of your network, right? Like I, I wouldn't have seen, I would have been exposed to these deals if if uh, I didn't have that strong network. So um, your network is in your network. Um, definitely, uh, you know, never forget the importance of that. You never know what's going to come um, out of it. And if you make it a win-win for everyone, it's uh, very powerful. Well, tell us um, tell us about the, uh, the Action Family um network that you've got um what is that what's it look like yes the, the action family essentially is for those who want to learn how to do what what we do right so um we teach people how to buy properties using again creative financing um and without joint venture partners and there's a combination of uh, videos that they can watch at any time of a lot of templates or cash flow matrix with the exit strategy that's been trademarked um they get access to weekly live sessions as well with dave um, and now we're over 2,000 members in, in the uh, the community they can network with as well, and and in the daily Q and A inside the group uh, with Dave and I. So we're we're very very active with our our community. There's questions every day, so we love it. <laughs> All right, well that's fascinating. Um, and again, well, how can people learn about uh, the Action Family? Yeah, if somebody's interested, um, I mean, the, the, they can just send us a, a DM M on any social uh, media, or, or they can go to, to our website as well, investormeldave dot com and uh, contact us through uh, through there. All right, there's, perfect. Yeah, there's some free videos there as well. They'll be able to check out. So love it. So that's www.investormel m e l investormeldave dot com. Now, when you are analyzing um, an apartment that you're interested in in investing in, give us the thirty thousand or maybe the fifty thousand foot view of how do you, and I know there's a lot of uh, details that go along with this, but when you're looking, what are some of the first things that you're looking at to analyze that deal mm. to see if it looks like a viable deal? So, yeah, I love that, Jay. So to give you that, the 30, 40, 50,000. Yeah. And I know level. I just asked you a three-day seminar question. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, no, and I love it though, because this is something all reverse engineer. So in the US, we primarily were Texas, Florida, and recently Ohio. In our opinion, we want to be in a more investor friendly, landlord friendly state. So we start off there, right? Uh, then from there, we'll look at properties, for example, that have higher cap rates, right? If we're going to do a buy and hold, a burr on a multifamily. So something that has a higher cap rate. Um, and then tertiary market, like we mentioned, then when we go deeper, it's Okay, can the rents be increased, right? Can we can we actually lift this asset with increasing the income or doing, you know, some minor cosmetics? Sometimes we do full gut jobs, but I'd rather have that lower hanging fruit just cosmetics. So can we literally lift the appreciation, sorry, lift the asset in appreciation uh, by doing either of those? How much is it going to cost? And like I mentioned earlier is if we do start increasing, let's take a templex for example. If we do increase the rent on all 10 of those tenants, what is the vacancy rate? If it is a lot higher and they all walk, then I'm we're stuck holding that that building and all the carrying costs. So it, it's just finding those. Once you start determining, hey, nothing over a certain amount of vacancy rate, I'm okay with. Uh, nothing under a certain cap rate. Uh, so we just we have those parameters and and we kind of stay within them, Jay. And, the, and that's kind of how we do deals. And if it works, awesome. We'll ask for seller financing. And then if the deal doesn't work, we're not afraid to walk away and and keep keep on looking for the next one. Yeah. As you were going through that explanation, I had a uh, saying that bubbled up in my mind <laughs> that I, that I tell, uh, that I tell people all the time. And that is the math makes the decision, not your emotions. Uh, yes. And, it, and in fact, that's, that's a common mistake that I've, I've seen with people starting out, even in single family houses, they're so excited about getting started. They pay too much for the property. A hundred percent. It has to be numerical. It has to be strategic. Take the take the and I mean we've it's I, this, not this. And right? we've admittedly almost oh, did the mistake. There's some buildings that I love and I just keep running the numbers. I'm like, please, the numbers change. Right, but the the they big, don't. beautiful, perfect looking building. I'm not saying they're, they're you can't cash flow from them, but we had looked at one that we almost purchased. 
but it was making the same amount as a duplex. So we're like, why are we buying this 20 plex making at the same amount and a whole lot more work and a lot more effort mm -hmm. and all those things, right? So it's really looking at sense. your numbers, um, getting your, your ego a little bit, uh, you know, put it aside, put your emotions aside. And does the deal make sense? So I, I love it, I love Jay. We're on the same too, page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let the math make the decision. Yes. Well, Mel and Dave, it has been a such a wonderful pleasure having you here on the show. And uh, any final words or final advice you'd like to share before we sign off? You know, I would just like to share that you know, if you're just, wherever you are in your journey, if you're just getting started, uh, what helped me a lot was realizing that. I can do it. it was my own, I think, confidence back then of not knowing how or whatnot. Well, all that is teachable. Everything is learnable as well. So have the right mindset. Um, don't just think about it. At some point, you have to take the action piece as well. Um, and if all these other people can do it, you know, you can definitely do it as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank you so much, Dave. And God bless you. Thanks so much. Dave. Thanks, Dave. All right. Look forward to seeing you in person at uh, our next mastermind get together. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of raising private money. And we really need your help. If you happen to be uh, watching uh, on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell. Uh, if you're listening on any of your platforms, your favorite podcast platforms, uh, be sure to follow so you don't miss out on any of the other uh, upcoming episodes. Be sure to like and share and spread the good news. So there you have it. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best and look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.